We're deep into Sefer Yoshua. Uh, last week, we uh, we did the Battle of Ai, um, and then they it described the uh, going to Hargrizim Har Eval, and they set up the stones where they wrote the Sefer Torah. It was all done when they crossed the Yardane before, but it was documented here. We gave for some reasons for that. Um, today, we're going to learn through the parrot, and then we're going to come back and go through, I think it's important here to get the story, and then we'll come back and we'll learn the, 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 the explanations of what happened here. Vayi kishmor kolam lachim, Bahar Uvashvela, when the kings, the 31 kings, there were 31 city states in Eretz Kanaan that were Evra Yarde. There were some that were in the mountains, some on the plains, some on the ocean, towards Lebanon. So just to think. Aren't we missing one? There's supposed to be seven nations. Which, na which, nation, uh, which nation is missing? Mm -hmm. the, the Girgoshi. The Girgoshi. So we'll have to explain where's the Girgoshi. They all gathered to battle Yoshua. You notice there's two words here that emphasize unity. They gathered yachdav and they spoke with pe'echad. So this group of people seems to be quite unified. V'yoshve givon shamu. Now, there was a people in the city of, Gi in the area of Givon, which is also west of the Ai. So, um, there's Yericho, and we're heading towards the Mediterranean, and it's just east. This is the area of Givon. It's a little bit north of Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim is down here. So, the people who lived in Givon, by the way, eventually, 300, uh, after 369 years that Klai Yisrael are going to be in Eretz Canaan because it's good, the, the, the Mishkan Shiloh stood for 369 years. So it's not going to be built until 14 years from now. Yoshua is going to conquer for seven years and then they're going to divide the land for seven years. And at that time, they moved the Mishkan. The Mishkan in those 14 years are in Gilgal. And in 14 years, they're going to move the Mishkan to Shiloh. And it's going to be in Shiloh for 369 years. Then it's going to fall to the Plishtim. And we're going to, Mirza Hashem, learn all of that in Sefer Shoftim. The reason I'm bringing that up here is after the Mishkan fell, the Aron was taken prisoner by the Plishtim. But the Mizbeach was built in the city of Nov Irakohani. And it was there for 13 years until Shaul Melech destroyed it. In chasing after Dobra Amelech, he suspected that the city of Nov Irakohani had shielded David and he killed out all the Kohanim in Nov. In Nov, in Nov. So after those 13 years, the Mizbeach was moved to the city of Givon, the same Givon that we're talking about here. So the Mishka, the, 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 for 57 years, 13 and 44, the Mizbeach was in the city of Nov and Givon. The Oron was not present with them. The Oron, we're going to see, was 20 years in Kiryat Arim after the Plishtim sent it back. And then for 37 years, it was kept in Ir David, 
in Silwan. So that's 20 plus 37, 57 years. What happened? Then Shlomo Amelech built the Beit HaMikdash and unified again the Mizbeach and the Aruch. In the period of time where the Mizbeach and the Aron are separated, you're allowed to offer korbanot on Abama. So that's why in these 14 years that Yoshua is battling the people and, the, and, the, and they're battling for seven years and they're dividing for seven years, the Aron is with Kla Yisrael. It's not, in, it's not in Gilgal with the Mizbeach. So somehow that lack of connection allows there to be private korbonos offered in people's backyards on a bama. Once the Mishkan is moved to Shiloh, the bomas are prohibited because the Mizbech and the Aron are unified again. In those 57 years, when the Mizbech is in Nov and Givon, you're allowed to do bombos again. Once the base of Migdash was built by Shlomo, the bombas are prohibited forever. The only reason I bring that up is, is this Givon is going to be, we'll see, a place of the Mizbeach, the Novin Givon. But right now, there's the Yoshve Givon, Shamu. Ernie, Sydney, you have a question? Ernie, yes, I just yeah. want to know, do we know what a Boma should look like? A Boma was a small Mizbeach, maybe even an Amma by an Amma. Was it, it a barbecue? No, it ha- remember, it has to be made of stone. You can't, you can't make, you can't use barzel. You can't lift it. Well, you put, you put coals inside? No, a fight, you know, it, like a, the, the same thing as the Mizbeach in Yerushalayim. You put wood and you had a fire that way. O- only certain korbonos were allowed on a bama. An ola and a shlavi. You yeah, couldn't bring a chattis. You couldn't the bring an asham. The daily Ola Satomi was offered in the Mizbeach in Gilgal or in Novin Givon. The Korban Pesach had to be offered as, as a Korban Sibur in the Mizbeach, in the, in the, you know, where the Mizbeach was, Novin Givon. Did you That's have to bring Kohen. a Kohen to your house to do it? I don't think you have to bring a Kohen. No, I think, I don't think you have, because remember, Shrita is kosher bazaar. And, and again, there were, there's no Kedusha here. There's no, there's no Mokam Kedusha. Mokam Kedusha is only when the Beis HaMikdash was, and, uh, you know, where Nov and Givon were. were. That's when you have a separation between an Azara and a Machina Lashchina and a Machina Levia. But in I mean, your so backyard, it's not, a, it's, it's not a place where a non kohen can't be. I'm trying to understand the mentality of someone that wants to build a bomb in his backyard. What's the purpose? Is he giving so you remember, thank- So, Sydney, that- remember, before the Chet Egel, the idea where there were 23,000, we learned it in this week's Parshas Bamidbar, there were 22,273 Bechoros. Each, there was a Bechor for every family. And the intent of Hashem was that every family have a Bechor, he was going to be the Kohen, and, all, and Korbonus were going to be offered by every family in the Midbar and in, and in Eretz Yisrael. It's after the Chet HaEgel, the Chet HaMarat, that we needed a Mishkan. That he, we now did a Pidyon for the Levium, 22,000 Levium for the 22,000 Bechoros. We read about it this week's Parshas Bamidbar. And it was taken away from everybody's family. And now, by Akel Moshe, and they, they were given the mitzvah of building a Mishkan, somehow that is the Kapora for the Chet HaEgel, but that was not the way Hashem wanted it. We were supposed to have our own private korbonos in our own homes. Just like right. Avram Avinu and Sora, the, 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 the Lechem, Haponim is supposed to represent the, 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 the Lechem that Sora Imenu had in the tent. And the Shulchan was the, it's the Ramban at the end of Sefer Shmos says that when, they, when, the, when the clouds came down by the dedication of the Mishkan, it was when we returned to the status of the Avos and the Miyamos when they had their own private tents. So, our homes were supposed to be that way. So I guess mm-hmm. in this period of time, the 14 years in Gilga and the 57 years in Novin Givon, we were allowed to have private bombers and korbonis, okay. but only certain korbonis, not a chattis, not an asham, not, not the korbonate seabor. That was all done in the, in the one uh, seabor dicka place. Okay. 
So the, the people of Givon heard about what happened, what Yoshua did to Yerichon to Ai. Vayasugam Hema Ba'arma. The Givonim did something treacherous. Now that's a, a, a word that was used somewhere else. And we'll see what that's connected to. Vayalchu Vayitztayaru. Vayitztayaru means they sort of put on costume. They made themselves look like they were travelers. By the way, the people who lived in Givon were the Chivi. The Chivi were one of the, remember the Chiti, the Mori, Knani, Afrizi, Achivi. So the Givonites were the Chivi. By Chusakim Balim Lachamarehem, they took old uh, sackcloth for their donkeys, and the other guy in Balim, worn out uh, uh, wine skins. Umuvukaim umetzorurim. As you say in English, we're on Dalit. It says uh, end of Dalit. Yeah, they were just they're they're worn out things, things that made them look like these people came from a far distant land. Unaalos bolos sumudutlos bragleim, old worn shoes. Ushlamos bolos aleya. These are garments, Matches. long gowns that also were torn. Their bread was dried out and spotted. Remember the camp, like we said, the Mizbeach and the Aron for periods of time, of course, when Gilgal. They said to Yoshua, messengers said to Yoshua, so these Chiviites, they live in Eretz Canaan, but they're playing a whole masquerade, a charade. They dressed up and everything looked like they came from, 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 from China. They attack here to Lanubri. They come to Yoshua, they say, we want a covenant with you. Vayomer ish Yisrael el So the people of Israel, Suspected them already. I, we're going to go into this in detail. But Moshe Rabbeinu in the Midbar, we were, they were already told when they enter into the land, they were not allowed to make a covenant with the seven nations. In fact, they were supposed to kill them out. Everybody. Men, women, children, everything. That was going to be what's supposed to happen. So the Ish Yisrael are already suspecting them. I think you're one of the nations here. We will be servants to you. So Yoshua asked them point blank, who are you and where do you come from? We come from a distant land. And now we want to come to worship Hashem with you. We heard that Kol Asher Asad in Mitzrayim, all the all the miracles in Mitzrayim. Vet Kol Asher Asad lishtei Malchem or Yashem Beva Yarden l'sichol Melchesh ban Lod Melchabosh Hashem Ashtoro. We heard about all the miracles in the desert and how you destroyed on the east bank of the Jordan the Sichon and Og. Vayomru elenu zikneinu v'chol Yosher Tzenu leMor. So our elders said, "Chu biyetchem tzeda ladarech." Let's take provisions from where we come from, from China. We want to join you. Go tell them, we want to be your servants. The attack here to Lanu Brit. And make a covenant with us. Initially, when we left our homes, our bread was fresh. But look, now it's dry. And it's Bahayani Kudim, it's spotted. The Eile Noadot Hayayin Asher Milenu Chadashim. These wineskins were originally new, filled with wine, but look, Hinehit Bakau, they're split open, they're old. These were the proofs that they showed that they came from a distant land. The Eile Samotainu Nalenu, these are our clothing and our shoes. Balu, they're worn out, may Rav Aderech Meo. Vaychuan Hashim Itzedam Vepi Hashem Lo Shalu. 
So the people, the Bnei Israel, who were there, took look what they what they showed them, and they didn't ask direction from Hashem from the Urim Vetumim. Vayas lahem Yoshua Shalom. Yoshua made peace with them. Vayichrot lahem Brit lechayotam. He made a covenant that you will stay alive. Vayishavu lahem nesiei aida, and the the princes of each tribe made a shvua publicly to go along with Yoshua that they, this is a covenant and they won't be killed. Three days later, they find out that these are the chivi. They investigated. And they found out that these are the people, these are people who live from Eretz Kana. So the Jewish people came to their cities. Barayim, what are their cities? Givon, Vaksira, Uveirot, Vikriyat, Ya'arim. Velohikum b'nei Israel. But what were they supposed to do? The army could not battle them. Ki nishbulah em nesiyayayda. Because the princes of the tribes that are already sworn publicly that they would not kill them. Ba'ashem lokei Israel v'ilonu kol ha'idal nesiyim. In fact, the Jewish people were upset with the princes of the tribes. What can we do? We swore to them. And now we can't do anything. So we have to keep them alive. And to break the Shavua, there would be anger against us. So the Nisim said that they're going to keep alive. They're now going to be drawers of water, schleppers of water, and schleppers of wood. Because they made, that's the deal they made with the Nisim. Why did you trick us? We're always here. You, you shall be cursed. You will always be slaves. And you will service particularly the Beit HaMikdash as water carriers and wood choppers. We had heard that Hashem had promised you and Moshe's servant Latet Lachem and Kola Aretz, Ula Hashmid and Kol Yosheret Bitnechem, and that there was a, a the seven nations were going to be completely wiped out. We were afraid for our lives. That's why Naseh the Davar Azeh. The Ata Hinenu Viadecha. We will be what in your hands, like you say. They were not killed. They became the water schleppers and the, and the wood carriers for the nation and particularly for the Beit HaMikdash. So it's a strange story. Let's go back to Let's go back to the beginning. I think it's an important, I want to read a, a basic Gemara. We have to understand the following Gemara from, from Ernie, before yes. you get started, I just want to ask you, do we have any idea how many people to give on him were, what the population, how many Chotve Eitzim and Shoavi Mayim, are they men, families? It's, an, it's like a pop, it's a tribe, right? Correct. It's probably a few thousands. Thousands, for sure. Thousands. Yeah, thousands. Okay. I just want to read the following Gemara. This is from the Talmud Yerushalmi, Masech the Shvi'is. Amud Vav. Shloshek Sovim Sholach Yoshua B'Knisatan La'aretz. 
Yoshua sent out three letters to all the people in Canaan, to the 31 kings and to the seven nations. Sholach lahem, mi sherotze lahashlim, yavov yashlim. Whoever wants to make peace with us can make peace with us. By the way, this is a pasuk in the Torah that when you're going to come to Eretz Canaan, you sh- they were given instructions and Yoshua carried it out. So he gave them three options. Make peace with us. That's not going to be so simple. We're going to see they had to keep the Sheva Mitzvah Snei Noach. If they wanted to make peace, they had to live under the subjugation of Klai Yisrael. They had to keep the Sheva Mitzvah Snei Noach. But they, could, but they could make peace with them. Or they could fight. Or they could run away. So there were those who were afraid and they ran away to Africa. That's the Girgoshi. The Girgoshi ran away. That's why when we read the Pasuk, there's no Girgoshi because the Girgoshi ran to Africa. The Omer Bidrash. So there's a machlokis. Some say it's the Gergoshi. In the Tanchum it says, Ki hu shapana. That it was, was the Kanani. Although the Kanani here are mentioned. That's why I think it's more pshat to say Gergoshi. And that because they left, Some say it's the Prizi who left. Although in this Pasuk, it, caught, it says the Prizi were still here. Im Cain. So now we have to come to the bottom line of this whole parent. If Yoshua sent out word that you could make peace with us, la, I'm reading the Radak here. Lama Hutzrachu Yoshve Giva Lahari Yikablu Asholom. Why did they have to go through this whole Atzaga? Let them just say, okay, we accept peace, and that's it. Why did they have to make up this? uniform and all of that, like they, they look like they came from China. Why did they have to trick them? Why couldn't they just make shalom? So keep, everyone should keep that in mind. In Cain says the Radak, <laughs> so the Radak already gives us his answer. The Gibonim said, well, he must have sent the same thing to the people of Yericho and I, and look what happened to them. He destroyed them anyways. <laughs> Maybe he won't keep his promise. And he's doing it as a trick. Lefichach says the Radak asu gamhein beorma, and they went through kiam ki meeretz rachoka hein kadesh chusulembris. So that's the Radak. We're going to give a few answers. You might accept what the Radak says. We'll give a few answers. Ernie, can so I ask you a of, question? Please. Yeah. The, the, if you look at the last pasuk of the last per, uh, the, of the previous parak, he talks hanoshim ba'tapa hager ha'holei bekirbechem. Maybe. Uh, this tribe was also trying to become gay women in the for Kalal Yisrael. Maybe, but they acted by armor. Is that what the Radak is trying to say? First of all, we're going to see that their, their the, approach was wrong and therefore they could never be accepted except as slaves. Uh, you know, show of Amayim. Why couldn't they become I, I didn't gay Bernie continue. Yisrael? Say it again, Bernie. I'm just asking you, why couldn't they become Say why again? couldn't they become gay rim? Why so couldn't they not, not become accept, gay rim? In you're not allowed to accept gay rim from the Sheva Ha'ami. Ah, okay. From where? The Sheva from the seven the nations. The seven nations, you can't accept gay rim from them. Now, because Sancheiriv, 
800, in year 702 BCE, he was misbalbel, all of the people. So we accept game from everybody. But they were specifically forbidden to accept. They were supposed to kill you. Lo sechaye kol neshama. This, the nations of the seven Ha'amim you could not keep alive. Unless, unless as we say, they were mashlim and they could keep the seven mitzvahs from the Noach. There, there were certain uh, criteria what it would be like if they, if they were mashlim with us. So right now we have one shot in the Radak that Yosh, they were afraid that, that, just, that they did mirma to Yoshua because perhaps Yoshua did mirma to the people of Yericho and I. That he tricked them. He also made shalom, but he ended up wiping them out. So that, that, that's how Radak learned. We're going to give it the. We're going to give a number of answers. We'll see who like you know which answers we like the best. I just wanted to get that thought going because I think that's an important thought that we need to have throughout the parish. So just when it says pe echad, so it's bahaskama echad, the etza achat says the radak. The the thirty one nations, the thirty one kings realized. Shishamu shlopatchu. I'm reading now the Malbim. Shishamu shlopatchu biyricho va'ay b'shalom. So they heard that they did not, that the Jewish people did not make peace with Yericho and I. They destroyed it utterly. So the 31 kings that were gathered together understood that even if we come to make peace with them, they're not going to accept us. And then, and then, then he saw that Yoshua made very co complex strategy. It doesn't go miraculous. Remember, he sent an ambush to the west and an ambush to the east, and he trapped them in the middle. So he sees that the Yoshua is coming in with a whole military plan. So they say, well, this is going to be a human battle. Al keni katsu yachad this drove them to gather together. That led to the Achdus. And that's why they spoke with Pechad. That's was how the Malbim was, learned. Um, originally Yehoshua's plan that um, he would try to make, um, to scare them so that they should band together. And this way he would only have to conquer them once as a group rather than, um, rather individu rather than individually. Outstanding. One of the one of the Meforshim is going to tell us that what you just said. So first, let me say the Chomas Oncha brings the Alshik. He made an ambush. He made you know he did it like in a real war. So that's when they came. Lemani is brought going kimel chamatayim derech teva. So it's because he wanted, like what uh, Mrs. Grady is saying, what Ellen is saying, <laughs> yeah. he wanted to show them that it was a natural war. Exactly what Ellen said. That's what the Al Sheikh says, that he purposely made a battle in I strategically to try to force the hand of the nations who were in Canaan to come together. And that's why he could wipe them out in two or three days, because they would all come together sort of to concentrate their forces. Many times, Napoleon, and you read about you know, different, they try to get an army to come out and meet you in force so you can wipe them out all out in one instead of. You know, not coming out in force. So that's exactly, Ellen, what, what the Al Sheikh says. So I read the Al Sheikh directly. Now, I just wanted to say a, a, um, the concept of Achtus. 
how Achdus is important. This is a medrash from the Yalkut Shimoni, even by the Goyim. Honor of Eva, there are three times in history where the nations fought against the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Right? When they built the Tower of Babel. And they fought against the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Because it says, Yitzatzvu melech eretz, v'rogzim nozdu yachad al Hashem al Meshicho. V'echad b'mei Yoshua, sh'nemar v'aitkatsu yachta v'ilachem im Yoshua v'im Yisrael p'echad. Ma'u p'echad sh'chak al Kodesh Baruch, sh'nemar bo shma Yisrael Hashem al Kino Hashem al Tabad. Their Achdus wants to fight against Klai Yisrael's Achdus. Now, listen to what the Musa and the Vim has to say. Very powerful stuff. The mashmi mizeh, the kolzman shaisalem safa achat, e efshar hayala makom la sotimahem uma. By the Tower of Bavel, what did Hashem do? He mixed up their language so they couldn't understand each other. It seems from Chazal that that's the only way Hashem could defeat them because the achtus is so powerful. When they were achtus, even by the Goyim, he couldn't. He had to separate them. They were lomer shakavanum v'zeh. It's the same. It says in Vayikra Rabbah, Tinokos b'mei dovin, ad shlo tam chet, ha'yu yodim lidrosh is a Torah, mentes konim, tome mentes konim tor. The children, the time of Dovod HaMelech, they were so bulky in Torah, that they knew 49 ways of saying something is torn, 49 ways of saying something is torn. But they, were, they would lose battles. There was Lush and Hara. There was civil war among them. King Achav and Jezebel, Ahab and Jezebel, who wiped out all the Nevi'im, only one Navi was left, Elio Navi. Kula Novde Akum Hayu. The Ayyade Shlohayu by Hendil Toru. There were no Lashnahara vipers. There were there was all the Achtus. Hayu Yotzil and Muhammad Vinotskin, they never lost the war. Hare the Kocha Achtus Godel Koka. Shena Kodish Brahu Osin Gan Din Gambo of the Zora. Im Yesh Achtus Beneya. And it's very powerful. But still, a Kodesh Baruch had to separate them. Otherwise, he couldn't come on to them. So it's a very powerful word there. Okay. Another interesting thing here. When it says in Post of Dalit, by Asu Gamheim Orma, what does Rashi say? Kimosha Asu Bnei Yaakov Bemir Lama Lishchem Ben Chamor. Let's remember, Yaakov puts Dina in a box so that Esav shouldn't see her. And Yaakov is punished for that. For us, that's the concept of Sadikim are treated Kichutasara. To us, he didn't want Dina to fall into the hands of Asa. So we would think Sneas, is, never like that, but no. Chazal say that Yaakov was punished for that. Because really, maybe Asa would have married Dina, and Dina would have been Machzer him Latova, say Chazal. Because of that, the mice of Shechem occurred. Remember? Shechem took Dina and raped her. And then the brothers were upset. They went to the people and they said, okay, you can join us if you have a bris millah. And Shimon and Levi three days later come and wipe out the whole town. So there was also Bemirma. Who are the people in Shechem? They're the Chivi. The Yoshve Givon Mina Chivi Hayu. So this is Mida Keneged Bibda. Says the Radak, the Rabbos of Neyakov, Shabola and Bemirma, Kemosha Omer Bemirma by the Beiru. Beim Ayu Chivon. So, so the, Ernie, the, the, Ernie. they had a tradition. No, mirma means trickery. So Ernie. since 
they knew the story of the people of their nation that were tricked by the Bnei Yaakov, so now we're going to trick them. Any, but you yes. also said by Yaakov tricked they, uh, when he came, he also kept, says over there, when he came for the brochas, he came by Mirma. That's what it says. When he came, when he got the brochas, he, it's also this. It I don't think it says the word Mirma. But the Nachosh, it says that. So yeah, hang on. So, it's, it's, so we have Midrashim regarding the Nachosh. That, that we have. That, I don't know if Rashi says over there, but that definitely says there for Mirma. And who got the meat at the no. naked meter? Why did Dina have to suffer? Good question. She's a woman. No, but, but Dina no, was a, a... He was in the no, box. Because I'll say that Dina was a... That happened to her. She had this downfall. No, but Esti, Chazal say that Dina was someone who went out. She, you know what I'm saying? She liked to go into the village. I mean, so that, that, so it's almost as if they say Dina brought it on herself. She right. should have been, she should have been in the home. Kvuda basmelech pnima. Well, I'm well, just saying what Chazal say. Huh? Yeah. That's why they locked her in the box. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't. No, no. They locked her in the box because he didn't want Esav to see her. But I in know, fact, I Yaakov is taken to task for that. That's the point I wanted to make. It was not correct what he did. And we would think that yeah, it's a, a, a mitzvah. Got, what? And she wouldn't have got raped, Ashkem. True. No, she, she got raped because she went out and people saw her. I know, but had she married Asaph, she wouldn't have had this tragedy. It would have been... Oh, yeah. Well, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the woman always suffer. Yeah, but Ernie, it could be a totsa that she went out over there because she got locked in the box so you know i don't know they locked her in the box no i just mentioned this i added the story about the box was not critical to what we're saying That's great. we know that shem got raped and excuse me great. shem raped great. dina and then to punish the people of shem shimon and, and levi tricked them Said you should have a mila. Then we, they came in, and Yaakov was upset with Shimon Levi. Shimon Levi don't don't get a bracha by Yaakov because he 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 made it risky for them. He was concerned he was going to get killed by by the nations of the of Kna. Okay, I think it was consensual. I want to read something else as. Another, again, this is from, we, we, we were struggling as to if, if, yeah, if Yoshua offered peace, why did they have to go through this whole trickery? Just make peace with them, with the charade. So I'm, I'm reading from Rabbi Michael Hatton, again, the Magid Studies in Tanakh, that By the way, later on, it's going to say that there was not a single city that concluded peace with the people of Israel, except for the Chivi who dwelt in Givon. So it's this story that, that the Chivi made peace with them, they had to do it through trickery, but it, it, they're only ones that happened. So he says like this, the greatest imp impediment to the adoption by the Givonites of more honest methods to secure a pact of non-aggression with Israel was not Yehoshua's intransigence, right? Because the Talmudic tradition tells us that Yehoshua was willing to make peace, but rather the unified Canaanite front that opposed any compromise with the Israelites. Sounds familiar. Exa <laughs> exactly, El. The town of Givon was thus forced to adopt subterfuge in order to avoid arousing the ire of the other Canaanite kings who would have opposed such an overture of peace tooth and nail, unable to publicly declare their willingness to surrender to Israel for fear of immediate and overwhelming retributions at the hands of their adamant brethren, the other Canaanim, the Givonites instead sent their embassies secretly and in disguise. Once they were in possession of the precious Israelite pledge of support, they discarded the pretense. The Canaanite attack was indeed forthcoming, but so was the Israelite defense. Had the Gibonites sued for peace openly, they would have been attacked and overwhelmed by their countrymen long before Yoshua and the Israelites might have come to their aid. 
we're going to see they did come to their aid. They did, they were attacked and the Bnei Israel came to attack their aid. But you see, there's a lot of very modern politics going on by perhaps these Givonites. That's why this Rabbi Hatton, who has a modern view, gives this shot, which I think has a lot of potential truth to it, that they really couldn't openly make peace because they would have been cowed by the other 31 kings. Do you accept that? But they, I mean, I happen to have read through the Parsha uh, last, yesterday, and there was a certain amount of trickery because of the way, you know, they, um, between uh, Yahushua accepting them and the, uh, uh, the elders um, promising them. Um, Ernie. Yes. Ernie, by, by the way, when, so when um, Esau came, Okay, but so but Rashi, Rashi, no, brings a, the, the, Rashi brings the Bnei Yaakov because they are directly descendant from the from the original Chivi that were tricked by Bnei Yaakov. Okay. 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 So first, I want to read the Malbim. Who says the Ladas Rambam in Hilchos Melachim, Mechuyov in Hayu Liftoch B'Shalom, Gam L'Shiva Amavu Amav. There is a debate among the Rishonim whether they even had to do that or not. The Rambam says they did, but there's some Rishonim that say no, they could they would go in, and the Melchemist Mitzvah was to just wipe them out, and you should not offer them peace. The Rambam says that the Mitzvah to offer peace was also to them. The Imikalim Aleim Shavu Mitzvahs Pei Noach Umas pay taxes. The Abdus that says the Rambam. Not all Rishonim accept that, but the Rambam did. So that's again, that brings the question, why did the Givonim have to do this? You know, because, so we went through the, 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 the various reasons. I think this also highlights uh, in our present day that um, Israel has never uh, said that other people besides Jews can live in Israel. The Palestinians have said, the Palestinians, you said, what are you saying again, Ellen? I'm, I'm saying that this highlights that even today in Israel, Israel, uh, Israel never says that nobody else can live in Israel except for Jews. We learned that. Okay. So then I want to go into a little bit about this Chotve Eitzim. I'm going to read a, med a Medrash. No, it's a Gemara from Yavamas Ayin Tess. By name Yoshua Bayomahu Chotve Eitzim. Yoshua made the, the Givonim, the, the water schlepers. Moshe Gazar Lehem, Shloyavo Bakala Hudara. Moshe Rabbeinu had already in his time said that you may not marry these were the Nesinim these people who were the Chotve Eitzacha you cannot marry them also Yoshua Gozolem is man Shebeis Amidosh Kaya Yoshua extended it to as long as the base of Migdosh is alive also also, David And David Amalek extended the Gzer that you can't marry to them even after the base of is destroyed. Because he's going to say, by Israel So there was a, a, a lengthening. First, Moshe said, only his generation, he can't marry them. Then Yoshua said only when the base of Migdash is around that you can't marry them. And then David extended it forever. So first of all, says the Musar Anaviyim, Nira Lomar, the Masha Suotam Lachot Beitzim Lushobay Mailum is Beyak, Zeloya Rakh Nesharat Sula Nisham Ulatil Alehem Olshem Abdus. It wasn't just a negative. 
that they wanted to punish them and that they should be servants. Right? The Jewish people are not going to marry from these people because Jew, they're not going to marry from the lowest of the society. In a way, was to their benefit. So first of all, remember the Bnei Israel were upset with the Nesim that they didn't kill them out. So maybe there would be a, a riot and they would kill them out anyways. They appointed them to serve the Mizbech as well. The Mizbech is one place where murder never occurs. And in a way, the Musar Nabim is telling us that the fact that they were placed to service the Mizbech was a signal, you sh- cannot kill these people. And where do we see this? Like we see it, Beresh Malachim. If you remember, Adoniyahu, right, rebelled against Dovid HaMelech and Yoah. And Dovid HaMelech instructs Shlomo to kill them. And they, where do they run? They run to the, to the base of Migdash and grab on. At that time, there was no base of Migdash. They grab on to the Mizbech and the Mishkan because if you hold on to the Mizbech, you cannot be killed. Chenita Baramba. In the Hilchos Ritzicha. He runs the Mizbech, the Nishmachlo. I feel like Azar is a Nitzel, even if he's a non Kohen. He's not supposed to be there in the Azara. But if he's holding on to Mizbech, you cannot kill him. You can't take him away from there. Now we understand why the Gzeir was only during the Pesach Midrash time. Because that was a benefit for them that they wouldn't be killed. Once the Pesach Midrash is destroyed, there's no Mizbech, there's no benefit to them. So that's the Musa and Avim goes through a process why why the the the, the, the Xeris were done at the time that they were doing. So Ernie, how did the coin go? How how when the coin didn't do the proper avoid on Yom Kippur, he used to be, he was killed. Go ahead. So, and he was inside the Kodesh HaKadosh. No, but the Mizbech is not in the Kodesh HaKadosh. Mizbech is outside in the Azor. You mean only the Mizbech would save them? They, if they, they had to hold on to the Mizbech, correct. We're going to learn, Mirz Hashem will get there. We're going to see in the first Prokim of Malachim, Adoniyahu and Yoav, each independently when they're chased, they run, they grab the Mizbech, and there they can't be killed. Eventually, they dragged them away and they killed them. But, but if, while they're there, you have to leave them alone. Mm-hmm. So this is the story of the Givonim. And by the way, because they, the, the Gemara in Ksuva says, Rabbi Yudah Oymer, Kol neder sheyadu bo rabim lo yachzir v'shlo yadu bo rabim yachzir. So if you make a neder publicly, you're not allowed to go back on it. My time at Rabbi Yehuda, the Chsiv v'lo hikum b'nei Yisrael, ki nishbu'u lahem nesiei ha'edah. So, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi says, where is the proof that you can't go back on a net there if you do it publicly? From this story. But says the Gemara of Rabbonon, hosem michal ha-shvoi la'yu klal, the Chachamim say, what kind of shvoi is there? Kivan da'onu lo'hum eretz v'chok ha-banu v'lo vahu, lo'chal ha-shvoi la'yu klal. It was a lie. They had not come from, they had come, it was not true that they came. So the, the, the Shavu is not, so says the Gemara in Gitten and in Ksubis, the Lokatlinu Mishum Kedusha Sashem. It had nothing to do with the Shavu. The Shavu was not a good Shavu because they lied themselves. 
But because publicly it was known that Klai Yisrael made a shvua, and if we killed them out, it would de derive a big chilol Hashem. And by not killing them, it's a Kiddush Hashem, because of Kiddush Hashem, they didn't kill out the Givoni. So again, we saw some very powerful messages today about Achtus, about Kiddush Hashem, and, and um, any, does anybody else have any other comments or? Yeah, what, is, what was the relationship between the Nesiei Ha'eda and Yehoshua? He, they, Nesiei Ha'eda went along with Yehoshua, because they came to them. These messengers came to the Yehoshua and to Nesiei Ha'eda, and they agreed. And then later the Amcha heard about it, and they were very upset. Yeah, but Yehoshua, but Yehoshua did not promise them. Only the Nesiei Ha'eda made the promise. No, but yeah, they made the promise. But then remember, the Pasuk says they came to Yehoshua, and Yehoshua agreed. There was a, there's a post that we said that they agreed, that Yoshua agreed too. Here. Um, oh. Vayaslam Yoshua Shalom. This is post of Ted Bob. Vayichotlam Brit Lechayotam. Vayishavu Lahem the CIA Aidan, and the CIA Aidan made them swear. Or they, the CIA Aidan swear to them that they would go on there. Mm hmm. Now you can now now I saw a very good kasha. Yoshua is a novi. How come he didn't know? What about Elazar? What about Elazar? A coin Godel, He had the word Vitumim. You know why didn't they? You know why didn't they do some? Why didn't they ask? Why didn't they ask? Why didn't he give the information? If he Yoshua did not ask Hashem. So so I'm saying I read the the it's considered a chet by them. The, the fact that, uh, that they went along with this is in a, in a way, because they didn't ask, when it said, lo, they didn't ask al pi Hashem, it's viewed as a, a negative. Wow. Okay. Very good. So any other comments? Thank you.